we're talking with a one of the nations and arguably the world's top business and intellectual property valuation experts, Kevin Yiannopoulos. I've been the beneficiary of listening to him for probably well over 30 hours during various continuing professional education and continuing legal education. Kevin, tell us a little bit and very briefly, you've got a great story. It's a long story, but very briefly about your education, training, and experience in the world of business valuation. Um, sure. And uh, I will start at the beginning, which is really the end for me. Um, I got out of public accounting. I tried auditing. I tried bookkeeping. I tried tax work. I tried internal auditing. And I felt like my right brain was shrinking to nothing. So I got out of public accounting and believe it or not, uh, was selling life and health insurance for about a year. And I sat down one day and I realized that I may not enjoy it, but I could make more than a buck 25 an hour if I did accounting. And so right about that time, uh, I decided to kind of jump back in with both feet. I bought the practice of somebody that was getting out of public accounting. So I, I jumped in with both feet. And around that time, uh, it just so happens that it was the, it was somebody that was beginning a valuation organization. And they had a spot, somebody got sick at the last minute. They asked me if I wanted to teach the course on business valuation. The first time I taught a course on business valuation, I had never done a business valuation. Uh, you can, I, I don't know what that means, but a lot of different things. Uh, I'm a risk taker, I suppose. I have no shame, I suppose. <laughs> but um, it, it I just loved it because it was, it provided me a creative outlet. And sometime after that, a, a someone I know here in Arizona uh, was writing an article and they talked about pioneers like Kevin Yiannopoulos. And at the time, you know, valuation was just getting fired up. And it was the Wild West. And I loved it. It was just fantastic. And the rest is history. I got involved with, um, so I, I was continuing to teach. And if you want to know how to do something, teach it. You will learn how to do it if you don't know how to do it. By, uh, I'm going to tell you what, teaching this stuff for 30 years has enabled me to withstand, I think, the most withering cross-examination simply because I've, I've had worse questions. Speaking at the Tennessee Society of CPAs, the questions I get there, oh, uh, what great preparation. So I, um, it, it really, that was the start. I, I have gotten certain valuation credentials. Um, the other side of the story is <clears throat> when I was a, uh, senior undergrad, I, um, I was going to continue on and get my PhD and teach at the university level. 
And my wife and I looked at each other when I was graduating and said, we're tired of being poor. So um, started my career, uh, continued on. I actually, believe it or not, still have always wanted to teach. So I have taught the AICPA Business Valuation School for 30 years. I've taught for the American Society of Appraisers. I've taught for the National Association of whatever it is now, Certified Valuation Analysts, <clears throat> Consultants, Valuators, and Analysts or something. That's what it is now. Uh, so I've always taught. And I this whole time I harbored uh, dreams of teaching at the university level. So I went back to graduate school in uh, 2019, uh, finished up with my MBA from the University of Denver in 2021. And I'm now an adjunct professor for the University of Denver and for Grand Canyon University. That's teaching. That's my sweet spot. Sharing knowledge, learning knowledge. Uh, that's what I love to do. And uh, hopefully that answered your question in a circuitous way. Well, it also gives me a chance to say it, it somewhat culminated in you being inducted into the AICPA Business Valuation Hall of Fame, which last time I checked didn't contain a lot of hacks. Yeah, it has fewer than 30 people in it. And uh, maybe one of the more interesting things, so I want to say that was back in 2010, uh, and there were fewer than 30 people in it. Um, last year, the Arizona Society of CPAs presented me with a Lifetime Achievement Award. And... I said to somebody earlier today that hopefully as we get older, we realize the relative importance of those things because um, what it means to me is I'm old <laughs> and, um, but it, I, I think the most meaningful thing to me is I recognize that, um, you know, I've tried to give back to the profession. And, and maybe the more interesting thing about the Arizona Society is I am a non-traditional CPA. Yeah. So. Well, me too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. So that was, that was very meaningful. Um, and yeah. so, you know, I mean, I, I will what? tell you what I'm, I'm going to uh, be a fanboy here for you. Um, I had uh, pretty much made the decision around the end of the year, first of the year, that I was not going to uh, speak on technical issues anymore. And, and the reason is, I don't know if you know this, Ron Sr. and I gave a presentation a couple of weeks ago on, uh, um, I will call it life equilibrium. And that's, that's what I want to share with people. I, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk, generally, I don't want to talk about discount rates, and the, you know, the technical stuff. I will say this. Special people that I know are going to use it for something valuable, I will do it. And, and that is why I was all over this because, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, no, you're very kind. I'm, we're, we're hoping to have you back, but let's, let's stay focused. And you've shared with us a great deal about your favorite parts of, of your life and the challenges presented by business and intellectual property valuation. What uh, advice do you have for young people considering a career 
that follows your exploration. Wow. Um, well, I'll, I'll just, I will say two things and they're not technical, but I'm just going to tell you, I, I believe this and I'll, I'll put it in two ways, three ways, actually, that are all related. The first is don't take yourself too seriously. And I, I can't tell you how important I think that is. The second is the man who can laugh at himself will never cease to be amused, which is kind of related to not taking yourself too seriously. And the third is, and you may have heard me talk about this before, uh, be the pebble. I have that at the bottom of my signature line and, um, Sometimes we, a lot of the times, we tr we try to bite off more than we can chew by thinking um, we want to change things and we want to change them now. And I think part of the reason why our society is struggling so much is that notion that we want to change things and we want to change them now. And it would certainly take longer, <clears throat> but um, a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago asked me for a tagline, and she liked Be the Pebble, but she didn't want to use it because that's what I have on mine. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. And she asked me to come up with something, and I just said, change yourself and change the world and that's you know it goes back to what stepard said you get the right words in the right order you can nudge the world and that's all we have to do just a little nudge a kind word to somebody um that miles is what floats my boat it's you know, it's uh, whether it's <clears throat> it was Mardi Gras the other day. So every Mardi Gras, I go out and buy a bunch of king cakes. And I take them to people. And um, I took one to uh, a restaurant that I go to a lot. I just gave him a king cake. I, I took one to uh, my dentist who I was in to have a, you know, that is what floats my boat and is infinitely more important than what I do. That's who I am. It's not what I do. Numbers is what I do. Lyrics is who I am. Good. Have you uh, represented any or, or uh, work for any famous people in their divorce? And can you share a story? And you don't um, have to use their name, but you can just say, excellent musician, athlete, business owner. The answer is yes. And I can't share who that is. Um, I'm actually working on one right now that. Uh, has some uh, Nashville uh, connections. Um, but you know what? Um, they're just people. Uh, I don't, I think I might have told you this that I was a music journalist for seven years. And I, my favorite interviews were singer songwriters because they were thoughtful about their answers. They were introspective and that's how they wrote. That is, you know, I mean, that that's, that's a whole nother, um, 
podcast as well. But uh, I'm yeah. I'm very blessed. Uh, people have asked me about a bucket list. I've always told them. I've I've always kind of if if I wanted to do something, I did it. And my, I had a stroke when I was 46. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I was paralyzed on my left side, which was my right brain. And I've always felt that there had to be some rewiring of my right brain, which like unleashed a monster. Um, I am very fortunate that I recovered, but you know, when you have something like that, it gives you a big dose of perspective. Uh, so, you know, you, you talk to me about the point counterpoint. Um, I like to sit back and listen to those guys, but I'm not sure I'm much for uh, especially with the ones that you talked about. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a lover, not a fighter, you know? Um, I got you. I got you. If you could, and I've asked you this question before, and yeah. I don't, I'm pretty sure I remember the answer, but we're going to ask you again on camera. If you could share a meal with any three individuals, living or dead, who would they be? Wow. Um, George Harrison would be one. Um, and I remember you saying because you thought he was a, a pure musician. Yeah. Not, uh, yes. And he. In, in, a, in a classical sense of what all that means. Uh, um. Buddha. And um, I would have to say um, James Taylor. And, you know, if you gave me another 15 minutes, I'd probably give you another three. Um, I have no doubt. <laughs> you know, um, but what, what I, about J? What about JT? I mean, I get Buddha because, in theory, he gives you some uh, code to enlightenment. I get that. Yeah. Uh, unless well, I'm wrong, you tell me wrong. Unless you just want to like, you, you know what? Give him a hard time. Frankly, which... all three of them represent enlightenment to me. Um, I had, you know, I I think I'm similar to everybody else i have um tough periods in my life i mean i i i can't compare i feel like when people know my whole story they would go how did you turn out even remotely normal then i might challenge the notion of normalcy but um you know at the same time um, I was going through my period when James Taylor, Cat Stevens, uh, Jackson Brown, and um, Gordon Lightfoot, they were, they were going through their stuff at the same time, and they were writing about it, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, Cat Stevens had near-death experiences. Uh, James Taylor, Taylor, heroin addiction uh, and failed relationships. Jackson Brown, the suicide of his first wife. Um, you know, Gordon Lightfoot. I was th this relation. We were all going through our stuff at the same time. Now, they had a head start, which was great <laughs> because they could write about it. And I could say, yes, I, I know. Um, James Taylor had an album called Gorilla. And that album, I was dating somebody at the time who 
was it for me and it didn't work out and that so that album had how sweet it is to be loved by you so that was like the start of the relationship and then there's another song called i was a fool to care you know and it was like so the the point i'm trying to make without getting even deeper into the weeds here is those of us that rely on music to get through tough times um, already have a very personal relationship with those people. And, you know, to some extent, I, I, I struggle a little bit to come up with people because I'm like, I don't need to sit down with them. Buddha, yeah, I'd love, oh, yeah. you know, um, George Harrison, just because I know he was just a regular guy. And, and, uh, you know, there, there, I don't know that Buddha was a regular guy. He might've been, but we're just, we're all, um, travelers. We're all journal journaling through life. And, you know, one more thing I will tell you, see, I guess some people think I pontificate and hopefully it doesn't come off that way. I, um, I would choose a different word. Well, I hope it's a positive one. Um, <laughs> but it, of course, of course. And I, uh, at some point in my life, I stopped thinking linearly life has a beginning and an end it's linear or we think it's linear love has a beginning and an end we think it's linear none of those things are linear they are a giant circle and they come back around and you know we existed before we were here we will exist after we're here and we're trying to learn as much as we can while we are here. Um, you know, we can talk about love some other day, but um, it's, always it's a good time. Always good. Never give up on love. Yeah. And as so says every divorced lawyer. You know. Um. Yeah. That that is a very definitely another topic. <laughs> All right. If someone wants to engage you as a business and intellectual property valuation expert how should they reach you well um i've got a uh an email address which is kry at bjyvalue.com you have that my office number is 520-327-8258 extension 110 and i want to say thank you so much one of the real pleasures in my career was i'm 99 percent sure i was there in 2010 when you got aicpa bb hall of fame and i remember thinking oh he must be one of the good guys because I knew everybody else in there. And there were, there were no hikers in there. And uh, so one of my favorite things about my career was being able to meet a lot of the big dogs over the years. And most of the time it was a lobby bar, you know, at whatever conference we were yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. And I did get a chance to get to know chat with, have dinner with two of the great legends that aren't with us anymore. One was Shannon Pratt, and uh, we shared a love of single malt whiskey on a number of occasions, and then uh, the great Tom Burridge, mm -hmm. who I still miss. Yeah. And uh, Tom was one of the most generous people uh, to me, and I know to everybody else as well. And to have been uh, in that crowd, I know I was excited for you, and I didn't even know you at the time. 
I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's real. That's serious stuff. And so we're so thank you for being gracious and giving us your time. And we hope we can somehow entice you to come back and talk a little bit about business valuation. And then we'll do a little bit on the pebble. I mean, a separate video with a separate uh, title and hopefully people would enjoy it. And I think, I think the universe has heard your advice and is heading in that direction as we see more and more on social media that we got craziness on social media, but we got other people talking about important topics as well. And I think, uh, I think that's going to help. So thank you very much, Kevin.